Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're diving into the depths of the ocean to showcase a true powerhouse, Kingdra. This majestic water dragon type Pokemon is not only a fan favorite, but it's also a formidable force in battle with a moveset designed for maximum impact. Armed with the ability Sniper and holding a scope lens, Kingdra is ready to unleash devastating critical hits that will leave your opponents trembling. But how do we set up this mighty sweep? Let's break down the moveset. First up, we have Agility. This move boosts Kingdra's speed, allowing it to outspeed even the fastest foes. With its impressive speed stat after this, Kingdra can quickly take control of the battle. Next, we have Focus Energy. This move ramps up Kingdra's critical hit ratio, setting the stage for some truly powerful attacks. With these two moves combined, Kingdra becomes a sweeping machine. And now it's time for the grand finale. With agility and focus energy set, Kingdra can unleash Hydro Pump and Draco Meteors with guaranteed critical hits thanks to Sniper and Scope Lens. Prepare to watch your opponent's health bar plummet. So are you ready to ride the waves of victory with Kingdra? Stay tuned as we dive deeper into strategies, tips, and some epic battles showcasing this incredible setup. Let's get started. The first game with Kingdra is against Captain Falcon from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, which you should definitely join by the way if you want to battle me and other like-minded Pokemon battling players. So with all that being said, let's jump into the first battle. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Captain Falcon Punch. Anyway, Galvantula comes in the first lead. We lead off with our Meowth Now, I know I outspeed this thing because I'm Choice Scarf, so I'm not too worried about it at all. I would go for a Triple Axle to try and KO, but I don't think he'll KO. Let's go for a U-turn and break the sash. There we go, U-turn comes through. Turn us into a bug type. And now they're probably gonna go for a sticky web. So we're gonna go into the Pokemon that I think puts the most amount of pressure on their team, which is gonna be Heracross. Now this does invite in the Goldengo if they knew my set. They don't know my set though. So let's go Heracross now. Hercules comes in, which is absolutely amazing. There we go. They go for a bug buzz instead of the sticky webs, which is fine. That's gonna bounce right off Heracross, no problem. Uh, and now we can just go for a Pin Missile or a Rock Blast. I'm leaning towards Rock Blast. I think I will go Rock Blast here. Now, they have to try and gamble here. If we Earthquake and they go into Goldengo, they are screwed. If they are Air Balloon Goldengo, we make them lose their Air Balloon, which is the great opportunity for us. They go for a Volt Switch. They're going to get on out of there doing some damage to my Heracross, taking us below half, which is fine. Um, Heracross isn't the key to winning this game, that's for sure. Um, but it's going to do it all right. So they go into G which is going to be the Goldengo. Probably Air Balloon. Air Balloon. That's why they've gone into G. So we went for a Rock Blast, which is going to break said Air Balloon, which is fantastic. And also, we're going to hit four to five times, which is going to do a nice little bit of chip damage to the Goldengo, which is great. So there's the fourth time. Can we hit three? No, no. We hit four times, which is fine. Um, now, unfortunately, we don't have anything to touch this Goldengo on this particular Heracross set. So we're going to have to switch out. Now, I'm leaning towards them going for a Nasty Plot. I don't think they would, though, because Meowth is right there. So I think they're going to go for a Make It Rain or a Shadow Ball. So I'm going to go into Moltres. So we withdraw Heracross. We can still use it for later. If we can get a Trailblaze off on that Swampert, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. So Turkey comes in. The, the uh, Moltres. They go for the Dazzling Gleam, which is definitely would have taken out my Heracross, but not quite this. So now, if we assume they're going to switch out, not wanting to get hit by a Flamethrower, um, we should assume they're going to switch out. So let's go for a U-turn. They do withdraw the Goldengo, which is fine. This gives us an opportunity now. As they go into Swampert. Now, Swampert is, this is a great opportunity for us. Um, because with Swampert in, we can go for a U-turn. Now, I'm not confident. Wait, actually, that U-turn damage, though. That U-turn damage, though. Kind of confident now. Feeling kind of confident. Goldengo needs to go down first. Let's just say that. Goldengo needs to go down first. So, what we're going to do is, because the only Pokemon they have to switch into Goldengo is really, is going to be Hagstress or Goldengo. Um, to Meowth sorry. Or we can go, oh, well, we go alone in Ninetales here all the time. We go alone in Ninetales here all the time. And we set up that um, Aurora Veil, 100%. 100% get that Aurora Veil up. So Snow Warning is going to come through. They're going to be scared out by the Freeze Dry possibility, um, which is great. They are also going to reveal they are Leftovers, which is really good to know for the Swampert. Um, so no Rindo Berry, which is good. So let's go for an Aurora Veil. Aurora Veil comes through. They actually stay in, which is interesting. Um, very ballsy play. They obviously was really confident I was going for an Aurora Veil there. And they go for a flip turn, which is going to do minimal damage to my Ninetales. So, it looks like we've got them on. We've got some pressure on the team. They are, they're, they're playing a bit aggressively now. Keeping the Swamp in against a potential freeze dry was very ballsy. I will say that. G comes in the Goldengo. Which is fine. Um, looking at the team, I'd say Kingdra's a really good option here. Because they don't really have a good Hydro Pump or Draco Meteor switching. Well, they have a good Draco Meteor switching being Excadrill. And this thing. 
but they don't have a good hydro pump switch. Uh, you know, you know what I mean. Like uh, both our moves cover all those Pokemon. So let's go Kingdra now. I don't think they'll dazzling gleam. I think they'll go for a make it rain or a shadow ball, predicting the Moltres to come back in. So uh, let's see what they do here. So Queendra comes in. They withdraw, and are they going to go Haxorus? Jolteon comes in. Interesting choice. So with Jolteon in, we are looking pretty good right now with our Kingdra. So let's go for a... Let's go with the Aurora Veil. Look, we may as well go for an Agility here and now. They go for a Volt Switch, trying to get some chip damage off on the Kingdra. It's not going to do too much, though, because it is neutral, thanks to our Dragon Typing. And they're going to get switched out, and also the Aurora Veil, of course. Right, G comes in once again, the Goldengo. Absolutely fine by me. We go for an Agility here. And we are getting ready to go through this team. We're going to put some holes in there for something else. So let's go for a Focus Energy right now. Focus energy comes through, which is great. And we've got the scope lens as well, which means basically guaranteed crits. So they go for a nasty plot. Oh dear, that is really, really terrifying. If they can live a hydro pump. But I don't think they can live a crit hydro pump. So let's go for a hydro pump now. They are going to terror. What type are they going to terror into to take a hydro pump? That's the real question. They are going to terror into a bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da. Water type. Brilliant. That, that, that works out nicely for them. However, I'm pretty confident that a non-stab Dazzling Gleam is not going to KO us, even at plus two, thanks to the Aurora Veil. So, we go for a pump. It's going to be a crit, obviously. And that crit does a lot of damage. There we go. Critical hit. And they go for a Dazzling Gleam, which isn't going to KO us, I don't think. No, it doesn't. That's great. So now, though, if they've got first impression on that Haxorus, we're kind of boned. So let's go for a Draco Meteor right now, just because it has a higher accuracy than Hydro Pump. Draco Meteor comes through. That's going to take out the Goldengo in one clean hit with a critical hit, of course. Because um, it's always crits. When you get, when you scope lens with focus energy, you always get crits. It's, it's, it's a very cheesy strategy, I will say. But Kingdra, you know what? Deserves it. Because Kingdra doesn't get much. Right, Excadrill comes in. That's a good play because they could dodge us. They're going to break the mold, which is fine. And they float in the air, the air balloon. We're relying on Hydro Pump here, so we have to go for a Hydro Pump, and hopefully we don't miss. We don't miss, which is great. Are they Focus Sashed? No, they are not. They had Air Balloon, I believe. Um, so that is a dead Excadrill right there. We have a third crit in a row, which is fantastic. Excadrill cleanly going down right there, which is amazing. Swampert comes through, which is fine. Now, can Swampert take a Draco? I wonder. Let's see if Swampert can take a Draco or not. So Draco Meteor comes through. He can't take a critical hit, Draco. Can't take a critical hit, Draco, right there. Swampert goes down, which is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. And the Aurora Veil does wear off, unfortunately. But like I said, as long as the Haxorus doesn't have first impression. But they brought the Jolteon in. So if the Jolteon's scarfed, it will outspeed us and KO us. If. It's a big if, though. Let's go for a Draco Meteor. We should outspeed, right? Yeah, Draco Meteor comes through. We don't miss one. It's great. Jolteon goes down to another critical hit with the... Oh, King, this Kingdra set's dirty, man. This Kingdra set is dirty. Galvantula comes through. Let's see what Galvantula can do in this situation. Probably nothing. Like I said, if it, it, they obviously don't have the uh, first impression. We go for a Draco. That's going to take out the Galvantula with a nice critical hit once again. And then we've just got Haxorus to deal with. Now, Haxorus could potentially do some stuff. Haxorus could do some stuff here. So Haxorus is going to come through now. Nice and shiny. If it's got first impression, which I doubt it does because they would have brought it in already if it did. If we miss this Draco Meteor right now, I'm going to be mad. We don't miss the Draco Meteor. Kingdra comes through. KO in the Haxorus with a critical hit once again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the game. So GG Captain Falcon, that was a really good showcase of Kingdra's power with a sniper. Absolutely amazing stuff. GG, a really fun game. What an epic game. Captain Falcon is such a good player as well, and Kingdra just absolutely went ham in that game. Gotta love it. The next game is against uh, Reese from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord as well, and this one is a good one. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Reese. So they're going to lead off with Saber, which is going to be the Cerule Edge as I led off with my Don fan. So this is a great lead for us, and that's for sure. We can get Stealth Rocks up right now. That's exactly what I'm going to do. They withdraw the Saru Ledge, which is fine. What are they going to go into, though? Doll. Is that the Goffitel? The Sin Chinchino. Right, okay, Chinchino is fine. We go for a Stealth Rock, which is great. There we go, Stealth Rocks are up. Let's see how this plays out. 
So we're going to withdraw Don Fan now. And we're going to go into a Lola Nine Tails because I think Lola Nine Tails can take a hit from this thing, no problem, right? With the snow up. And they probably go for a tidy up, I reckon. Does he even get tidy up? I can't remember whether Chinchino gets tidy up or not. Um, yeah, they do get tidy up. So tidy up comes through on the Chinchino. Chinchino having a free Dragon Dance that clears hazards is pretty overpowered. But they tidy up, which is great. And their attack is going to raise and speed is going to raise. So we are looking pretty bad right now against this Chinchino. Now I'm going to go for a Aurora Veil here. Just so that I can uh, get that defensive boost. They go for a Rock Blast though. We aren't... We oh. Skill Link. I forgot about Skill Link. There we go. That's going to take us out, unfortunately. Unless the Technician. They might be Technician with a load of dice, to be fair. They might be Technician with a load of dice. Um, that, that would make sense. So now... Best bet's probably Don Fan. So we're going to go Don Fan now. Don Fan can take, definitely take a hit from this thing. Uh, we go for an EQ here all the time. We can definitely take a Bullet Seed, I'm pretty sure. And um, they do go for the Bullet Seed. It's going to do enough damage to nearly KO us, but not quite get the job done. So they hit three times. Let's see if they even hit four times. Then we'll know the load of dice. Yeah, hit four times. That means the load of dice with Technician. That explains the damage output. So let's go for an Earthquake. Nearly takes them out, which is great. And then we'll go for an Ice Shard and we'll just get rid of it like that. Um, it's not going to KO it, but it'll do nearly do the job. So they go for another Bullet Seed, which is, of course, going to KO us. So we lost Don Fan and we lost the um, Alolan Ninetales. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. We can still pull back from this. Going to go into Meow Scarada now. Like so. I know we still outspeed this Chinchino because we are, of course... Um, what do you call it? Uh, let's go for a knockoff. I'm, I'm feeling like a knockoff is a good play. Knockoff comes through. It's going to change into a pure dark type. We are choice scarf, so we outspeed them still. Knockoff comes through and takes out the Chinchino, which is fantastic. So with Chinchino gone, we're looking pretty good right now. Utaro the Great comes in, which is going to be the Cleavor. Good play. They're probably going to go for a U-turn here. Do I be ballsy and go into Moltres? I think he's my only switch. Let's do it. Let's go for Moltres. Even if they go for a Stone Axe here, we can still potentially burn them, and then we can bring Kingdra in and start doing stuff. So let's see how this plays out. So... Turkey's going to come in now, like so. And uh, they go ahead and terror. They're going to terror the Cleavor. Okay. What type are they going to terror into? Fairy? Bug. Okay, so they're going all out. So they probably have gone for a U-turn, which is good. They obviously didn't expect us to go into Moltres, as you wouldn't. Um, they go for an agility. Oh, crap. We are screwed. We are very screwed right now. We could still burn them. I'm going to try and go for a Will-O-Wisp just in case we do live. But they actually withdraw. They don't want to get the burn on the Stone Axe. That's fair enough. So they're going to go into what exactly? Saber once again. It's probably Flash Fire if that's the case. And we go for a Willow, which is going to boost their Flash Fire. It doesn't affect the opposing Saber. Oh no, they're a Fire type. They just don't care. Um, I'm going to go for a Flamethrower and Scout. See whether they're weak armor or not. Because I don't want to give them a weak armor boost. That's for sure. They go for a Swords Dance, though, and we go for a Flamethrower, which is going to do minimal damage, but it's still damage nonetheless. So let's keep going for a Flamethrower, and we'll try and weaken this thing. They go for a Poltergeist. It's going to sting a little bit, but it won't KO us at plus two. Nearly does the job, though, as we go for a Flamethrower, which is, of course, not going to do too much damage to us. So let's go for another Flamethrower. I don't mind Moltres going down here. They go for another Poltergeist. And um, attacking us with our own heavy duty boots. Boom. Down goes Moltres. But you know what? We're set up now. They can't Terra. They can't Terra. So we can go into Kingdra, for example. Kingdra should outspeed and go for Hydro Pump. And um, we could go into Miascarada. I'm going to go into Miascarada because it resists the Shadow Sneak. So I know we can definitely take it. But if we're going to win this, it's going to be with Kingdra. So let's go with Knock Off right now. Knockoff comes through. That's obviously going to KO the um, Saru Ledge, which is great. But it does give them a free switch in with the Cleavor, which is unfortunate. So, um, Saru Ledge going down there is fine. Buta Arrow comes in. That is, of course, the Cleavor. Nice and bug type. Um, they're going to go for an agility or a bug type move here. So let's go for a knockoff and just get rid of their item. Let them go for the agility. If we can get rid of their item, it does half, which is really good. Metronome. Interesting. They go for a Fury Cutter. Ooh, I love that. That's awesome. It is unfortunately going to KO us because of the sharpness ability. That does affect Fury Cutter, if you didn't know. Um, now what do we do? Um, going to go into Heracross now. 
I think Heracross can take care of this thing. Or at least weaken it to the point. Well, I don't know. It could take care of this thing. So let's go for a Rock Blast. I'm pretty sure they outspeed us, but we should be able to live one Stone Axe. Actually outspeed ourselves, so that's great. Rock Blast is going to KO the uh, Cleavor, which is fantastic. So Cleavor going down is great. Um, I don't believe we've Terraged yet, so we should be all right to well, hold on to that. And then we're going to get a Moxie Boost as well after we've KO'd the Cleavor. So Heracross is looking pretty threatening right now. Megatron comes in. That's going to be the um, Metagross, right? Yeah, Metagross comes in. Again, we know this thing called Terra. Um, I think we're better off going for a Pin Missile here, so I'm going to go for a Pin Missile. Uh, it does, if we can hit all five times, it does a bit more damage than Close Combat would. And at plus one, it's going to be a two-hit KO. Well, technically, you no. Know, you know what I mean. Two-hit KO, as in, like, if we hit minimum four, it's going to take two of them. So anyway, they're going for a Psychic Fangs, which is going to KO the Heracross, unfortunately. But you know what? I'm pretty confident we can win this still. With the power of Kingdra. Kingdra and anime on our side. So let's go to King Qu Queendra now. Um, we'll go for a Focus Energy. I don't think they'll explode, will they? Focus Energy comes through. Hopefully we don't get knocked off here, which would be unfortunate losing that scope lens. And um, they actually go for a Trailblaze. Interesting. So Trailblaze comes through. And now we just go for a Hydro Pump, right? Do we risk it for a Chocolate Biscuit? Let's go for a Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump comes through. We still outspeed them, even with the agility, which is, which is really cool. Well, the Trailblaze, sorry. Really cool stuff. So Megatron goes down. And now I think we win with Kingdra from here. Celestia comes in. That's going to be the Goffy Tell, right? Yep. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. We go for a Draco Meteor here. It's a bit more accurate. Draco Meteor comes through with a crit guaranteed. Taking out the Goffy Tell, which is fantastic. Kingdra is so powerful with this set. So powerful with this set. Like, Goffy tells no slouch on the special defense side either. And now comes in Beros, which is going to be the Decidueye. Kingdra has made an epic comeback from us. We went from a 3 to 1 to a sweep. Let's go for a Draco Meteor and hope we don't miss on the Decidueye. Draco Meteor comes through. It, sh it should be a crit. It does crit, of course. Taking out the Decidueye. And that is going to be the game. So, GG Reese. That was a great one for the Kingdra video. That was a good one. What a game, Kingdra popped off big time. I really like this set so far. It's doing really well and you gotta love it. The next game is against Jojo Dooman from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord as well. And this is a really good game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Jojo Dude Man. So they're gonna lead off with Derbzilla, the um, Swampert, as I led off with my uh, Magician, the Meowskarada. So this is a really good lead for us. Now they, they either Terror or they switch out one of the two. Um, I'm... <laughs> I'm just going for a flower trick. I don't want to get KO'd though by, by a Terra, whatever it is, Avalanche. That's for sure. So I'm going to go for a U-turn here. Um, because they're obviously going to withdraw as they do. That's great. So Swampert goes away. They bring in the Pretty Lights, the Tower Master, which is going to be the Ninetales. Um, they get the Snow up, of course. And then we go for a U-turn and get on out of there. So they don't have a Defogger or a Brick Breaker by the look of it. I don't think um, Blaze is going to be Brick Break, that's for sure. So we get Meowskarada out there with a U-turn, and we get a free switch on him with the Ninetales. Now, this is great. So um, we can go Moltres if we want to. I think I will go Moltres just to put a bit of pressure on it, stop it from going for that Aurora Veil, potentially. Although I feel like they still go for the Aurora Veil, despite that. Um, but let's go for a Flamethrower anyway, just to see if they do. So they withdraw. They don't want to get They don't want to get Flamethrower. They don't want to get Roasted. And they're going to go into Rubber Ducky, which is going to be the Paragon 2, right? That's a cool nickname, Rubber Ducky. I like that. And um, they get a download boost in special attack, which is really unfortunate, as we go for a flamethrower, which is going to do diddly squats, because it is an Eviolite, probably, um, Porygon 2. So let's go for a U-turn. We do have speed, of course. U-turn comes through. Does a nice little bit of chip damage to the Porygon 2. And we're going to have to go in something that can take care of this Porygon 2. So they probably go for a Thunderbolt here. Um, in which case, I think we're better off going to Ninetales, getting the Aurora Veil up. So I'm going to go into Ninetales now. Vimto comes through. Like so, nice and shiny, gotta love it. They go for an Ice Beam, which is even better than a Thunderbolt, because it's going to bounce right off as even a plus one. Um, so we go for an Aurora Veil here, that's always going to be the case. Aurora Veil comes through, they do stay in, which is interesting. Are they going for a Tri-Attack though? That's the real question. Would they go for a Tri-Attack? Thunder Wave, and they miss. Ooh, unlucky. Unlucky, so that's um, fine. So do I want to Encore them into that, or do I just switch out to Don Fan? So they do withdraw Rubber Ducky. They withdraw the Rubber Ducky. And they're going to go into Derpzilla, the Tower Master. Which is great. Um, we go for an Encore. It's not going to do anything to them, of course. 
And the next turn, we can just go for a freeze dry. They know we have freeze dry though, because obviously they've got their own nine tails, so they know it's got freeze dry. Um, so they're probably not going to, they're probably going to terror here. But I'm going to go for a freeze dry anyway, because I'm confident we can live any attack from this one pit, even if it terrors. Which it is doing. It's terroring right now. That's the only reason they would bring it in, but I decided to go for the freeze dry anyway. So they're going to terror into a steel type. No, an ice type. Okay, ice is cool. Probably because they have avalanche on there. But you know what? Freeze dry is going to give a little bit of chip, so it's not the end of the world. Um, as there we go, Freeze Dry comes through. A little bit of chip on Derbzilla. And they go for a Stealth Rock. So Stealth Rocks are officially up on our side of the field. Which is fine. I'm not too worried about that, to be honest with you. And um, we do have the Donphan. They haven't got a Ghost type. Oh, they've got Mimikyu, actually. They've got Mimikyu. Um, if we can break the disguise on Mimikyu, that would be awesome. Awesome, that would be. Um, so what do we do now? I'm, I'm guessing we go Donphan. Tough one. I think I will go Donphan here. Um, they wouldn't expect us to switch Donphan in against the Swampert. Swampert does go pretty hard against our team, though. That's the thing. So, Michelin comes in. Stones dig in. They go for an Ice Punch, which is not Avalanche at all. It's going to sting a little bit, but not too much because of the Aurora Veil. And then they're going to get some Rocky Helmet shit, which is nice. Um, all we have to do now is go for a Rapid Spin, then get our own Stealth Frogs up, and we'll be golden. So, they withdraw. They're probably going to Spin Block with Mimikyu, which is great. We want that disguise gone. Pretty Lights comes in the Ninetales, though, instead. And that's going to get the snow back up, which is fine. Rapid Spin's going to bounce right off this thing. But you know what? It's still chip at the end of the day. Just slowly chipping away at the team. So stones disappear from our side of the field. We get a nice little speed boost, but it's not enough. As we can go into Moltres now and take any hit from this thing. So let's let's see what, if they go for an Aurora Veil or not. They probably do. Aurora Veil seems like a good choice here. So we'll go Moltres anyway. They do go for the Aurora Veil, which is fine. Um, we can crit through that. I'm pretty sure. Not sure, actually. Let's go for a Flamethrower anyway. They withdraw Pretty Lights. What are they going to go into? Porygon 2 again? Rubber Ducky comes in. That's fine. So Rubber Ducky is in. We know it's got Ice Beam. We know it's probably got Tri Attack. And it's got Thunder Wave. Let's go for a Flamethrower and get a little bit of chip on it. And they probably have Recover as well. Um, I'm tempted to burn this thing. I'm going to burn it because I'm expecting a um, Thunder Wave here. So we may as well just go for the burn. Get the burn on the Porygon 2. A little bit of chip damage every turn. Since they've got the Violite, they've got no reliable um, residual recovery and leftovers. They go for a T-Bolt. So they are T-Bolt, Thunder Wave, Ice Beam, and probably Tri-Attack. So we don't we don't have a recover on there, which is good. Um, they obviously got a bit more of a boost. And um, the Aurora Veil wears off. That's the unfortunate part here. So I'm going to go for a U-Turn here into Ninetales. There we go. We go for a U-Turn. Another bit of chip on the Paragon 2. They could be Bolt Beam with Recover and Thunder Wave, to be fair. They might not have Stab. Um, so we're going Ninetales now, since we're not worried about Stab Tri-Attack right now. But they've got to have Recover on it, right? They've got to have Recover. Thunder Wave, that's fine. They're going to miss again. That's really unfortunate for them. But quite fortunate for... Oh, the snow's going to start. That's really unfortunate for me. Re I didn't count the snow turns, I forgot. Um, right. Let's go for an Encore again. Encore comes through, which is great. Means they're going to be locked into Thunder Wave. And if they miss again, that'd be hilarious. They don't miss again, which is fine. But they're locked into Thunder Wave now. Which means they have to switch out. So their best bet, really, is going to be Blaziken, I think. I think this is where we see Blaziken come out. Could be. So let's go into Donphan anyway. We know they're locked into Thunder Wave, so we can freely switch Donphan in and get our Stealth Rocks up. That's, that's going to be important. So, we'll get Donphan in now. And then they do withdraw, which makes sense. What are they going to go into, though? Hopefully not the Ninetales. Steamroller. That's going to be the Iron Treads, right? Iron Treads comes through. Floating in the air with an air balloon, which is problematic. So, I'm going to go for a... Uh... They might go for Stealth Rocks here, so I'm going to go for a Rapid Spin, I think. Now, I'm going to go for an Ice Shard. Just to break the air balloon first and foremost. It's going to do no damage because of the uh, Aurora Veil they've got, but it's fine. They go for a knockoff, which is going to give them some Rocky Helmet chip, which is fine. And now they probably go for an earthquake. So that's something to look out for. So wh what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... Oh, no, I can't. I can't go into Ninetales. Paralyzed. Uh, I'm going to go for an EQ here. So they withdraw Steamroller. And they're going to go into Red Ranger, the Tower Master, which is going to be the Blaziken, which is interesting because we went for an Earthquake. So are they weakness policy behind Aurora Veil there? 
They are weakness policy. Okay, so that's that's really scary. Blaziken with weakness policy is super scary. Really good play. I will say that. Really good play. The, the opposing with Warabell wore off. But it didn't get a speed boost. Oh, no, you don't get it when you're first switching. You get it the next turn. I forgot they changed it in Scarlet and Violet. Um, we go for another Earthquake here just in case we live. They go for a Flame for us. Another special one. That's going to KO us. Special Blaziken is really cool with weakness policy. That is a really interesting set that you've got there. And they get a speed boost now, which is great. So now we are in a bit of a pickle, but not too, too worried. Because I do have the um, Moltres in the back. Um, Meow Scrod is probably best here. Do I need Meow Scrod for anything else? This is a tough one because they're going to have an Aura Sphere. We'll go Meow Scarada for now. Meow Scarada for now. And um, we do outspeed because they're only at plus one. So we could go for a Flower Trick. I think Flower Trick is more, right? Flower Trick will do more than Knock Off. So let's go for a Flower Trick here. They go for a Vacuum Wave. I wasn't expecting Vacuum Wave. I will be real with you. Vacuum Wave I was not expecting. Vacuum Wave I was not expecting at all. They get another speed boost. I should have Terra Watered with Don Fan. Should have Terra Watered with Don Fan right there. Um, Heracross. Terra Rock. We've got that. We should be able to take a hit with Ninetales as well. Let's go into a Heracross, like so. And we'll Terra Rock. And we'll go for a... We'll go for a CC because we can't afford to miss. We'll go for Terra Rock and hope they go for a Flamethrower. Hope they go for a Flamethrower. Pretty much. Because if they go for a fighting move here, predicting this, then we're screwed. But we should be able to live a flamethrower, no problem. So let's see how this plays out. Flamethrower, great. We should be able to live that plus two. We do live just fine. No burn, which is nice. Close combat comes through, takes out the Blaziken, panic averted. So with the Blaziken out of the way, we're looking all right, to be fair. Steamroller comes in. That is going to be the Iron Treads. Now... I am afraid of this thing, but we have got the Moltres. So let's go Moltres now. Just to get it in there. And we'll go for a Flamethrower straight up because not really a lot wants to take the Flamethrower. The Paragon 2 is weakened. So we'll go Moltres now. They do go for an Iron Head. We might get the Burn here. It's always a possibility. No Burn though. Um, the Paragon 2 is already burned, so they probably go into that now. So I'm going to go for a Flamethrower here. And um, they actually go for a knockoff, knocking off our Heavy Duty Boos. And uh, that, sh that could burn them as well. No burn. That's fine. Flamethrower comes through. Takes out the Iron Treads in one clean hit. No critical hit needed. Boltres are just that good as the Iron Treads now goes down, which is fantastic. Mama's Boy comes in. Who's Mama's Boy? Mimikyu. Okay. That's fine. Let's go for a U-turn here. They go for a Sword Dance. Maybe I should have gone for a... Ooh, this is a tough one. Um, we, break, we break it with U-turn. This is... Alright, this is what we do. This is what we do. So we break the disguise with U-turn right now. Which does a little bit of damage. A little bit of chip to them. About the same amount of chip as we would have done if they didn't have the disguise. So that's great. And we go into our... Ninetales? We go into Ninetales here all the time. We always go Ninetales here. And we get up the Aurora Veil. Which would be great. So we go for the Aurora Veil right now. They go for another Swords Dance. They're boosting. They're boosting up. They're boosting up. Very terrifying stuff right there. But our Aurora Veil should come in clutch here. And help us to take some hits here. So let's go for a... Um, let's go for an Encore and lock them into whatever move they want to go for. They sell another Swords Dance. Oh, wow. This is perfect. So now... Now... Encore comes through. Like so. Locking them into Swords Dance, which is fantastic. We go Kingdra. We go Kingdra here all the time. They withdraw. They withdraw even better. Are they going to go Ninetales? Pretty lights. The Tower Master comes in. That's the Ninetales. Okay. So this is bad for us because we went into Kingdra. Knowing us. Knowing us. I had to think for a second then. We probably would go into Moltres or Ninetales again here. I don't think they go for a Freeze Dry. But I'm pretty confident we can live a Freeze Dry. They go for an Aurora Veil. That's great. So Aurora Veil comes through. We get an Agility off, which is fantastic. And then we can go for a Focus Energy. And hopefully our Hydro Pump will KO through the Aurora Veil against the Ninetales. 
hopefully. The snow does stop, which is good timing. And um, we go for a focus energy here, and we hope that we can live a uh, freeze dry here. So let's go for focus energy like so. They haven't got the Mimikyu could have priority, but I don't think they will KO with us. We do live, which is great. Snow freeze, that's great. We go for a hydro pump, and if, as long as we don't miss, touch wood. My, my desk is made of wood. Hydro pump comes through, it's going to be a crit. Yep, there we go. Nine tails goes down, which is fantastic. Guaranteed crits, ladies and gentlemen. Guaranteed crits. That's nine tails down. Mama's boy comes in. That's the Mimikyu, right? Yeah. So we have to make sure this Hydro Pump connects. Can we please? I've got my fingers crossed. Hydro Pump, connect for me. Connect for me. Shadow Sneak, that's fine. We can take two of those. Yeah, we take more than two of those. Hydro Pump, it doesn't miss, which is great. And that's a dead Mimikyu with a critical hit. Awesome stuff. Kingdra making the comeback right now. Kingdra making the absolute menacing comeback right now. What a legend. Rubber Ducky comes in. You cannot take a Draco Meteor. And I'm obviously going to go for a Draco Meteor here. Because it's got better accuracy than Hydro Pump. And I've touched wood too many times. Let's go for a Draco Meteor. There we go. We connect. Should KO. Does KO. Paragon 2 is down. Kingdra makes a little reverse sweep. Amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff by Kingdra. Absolutely amazing stuff by Kingdra. It's a real threat under the right conditions. Auroraville wears off, but I'm pretty sure the, um, the Swamp Pit cannot take a Draco Meteor with a critical hit. So Derpzilla comes in. So full HP. And unless they're Assault Vest, which they might be, Draco Meteor should KO here. Draco Meteor comes through. It's going to be a crit. I know that. Yep. And that's going to be the game. Kingdra coming through. What an absolute beast. You got to love it. Got to love it. GG Jojo Dude Man. What a nail biter. Kingdra came through in the end there, though, with those critical hits, even through Aurora Veil. Nothing was taking those. Nothing at all. So you thought the video was over, right? Well, guess again, because we have ourselves a bonus battle with the Kingdra team versus Cody from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord. I always have really good battles with Cody, and this one is truly a nail biter. You are going to love this if you love quality battles. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Cody. So they're going to lead off with Slow King, which is great for us because I led off with my Meow Scarada. So this is a really good lead for us. Um, let's go for a knockoff straight up. We get a knockoff on anything they want to switch in. Probably going to see an Okie Dogie switch in, to be honest with you, but a knockoff on that's going to be nice. Um, but we actually get the knockoff on the Slow King, which is great. They actually have the berry as well. Is it the, I can't remember what the berry is called, the Colba Berry, I think. Yeah, Colba Berry, that's the one. Um, they go for a sludge wave, which is going to sting a little bit, but not it won't KO us at least. No poison as well, which is great. So now, what we're going to do is, um, I'm leaning towards, because they might go for a slack off, they might go for a chili. I don't think they go for another sludge wave. Don't think they go for another sludge wave. I think they go for a chili. So I'm going to go into Heracross now. I think Heracross is a fine switch, because pin missiles should KO from here. And then we'll get a moxie boost, it, as long as they don't switch out here, which they might do. Um, so we go into you. They go for an Ice Beam, which is obviously predicting something to come in there. Um, no Freeze, which is nice. So always, always, always grateful for that. Um, now I kind of want to go for a Trailblaze. Now it looks like they're an offensive Slow King, so we need to be careful here. So I don't want to go for the Trailblaze, really. Um, I am just going to go straight for a Pin Missile here. They do withdraw the Slow King, which is fine. They're not wanting to take a Throat Shop or whatever I want to go for. And they're going to go into the Okie Dogie, which is also fine. This thing does completely wall this Heracross, but Chip, regardless, is still Chip. So we're going to get two hits, three hits, four hits, and of course five. We do get the fifth hit, which is nice. So all five hits, it does absolutely nothing, um, obviously, because it's an Okie Dogie. Um, so now we're going to have to switch out. So what do we go into here? I'm, I'm leaning towards Moltres. I will be honest. I'm leaning towards Moltres. So I think I am going to go Moltres here. So we withdraw our Heracross. We're going to go into Moltres. Moltres is the optimal switch to remote Okie Dogie. It does resist it's one of its stabs and is uh, neutral to the other. So let's go Moltres now. They do go for a knockoff, which is fine. We expect a knockoff um, tech kind of. We might get the flame body as well. We don't get the flame body, which is fine. And now they're probably going to expect a willow or something. So I'm going to go for a U-turn here. We, they should outspeed us if they do stay in, but they don't. Of course, they're going to switch out probably into the chandelier if I had to guess. Um, the T-Tar is also a good one. If I'd have burned there, we would have been in a very good position. So... Um, they're going to get the Nerve off, which is interesting. So no Sandstorm on this particular Tyranitar. So now, what we can do is, now that we've U-turned on it, they have Red Card. No, Weakness Policy. Oh. 
That's a problem. That is a problem right there. So we're going to have to go into something that's fast that can take out this Tyranitar. Now, the only thing I can think to go into is going to be the flower trick on the Meowth So I am going to go into the Meowth right now. Good old magician over here. Because this thing's got a weakness policy and we do not want to... We don't want to mess around with that. So let's go for a flower trick straight up. There's no reason not to because even if they switch out, it'll still do some bit of chip to something else. And based on the damage that non-stab... Oh, they're going to terror. Never mind. Never mind. I was going to say, based on the damage that the non-stab U-turn did to the Tyranitar, I'm guessing flower trick will KO. But if they're going to terror like this to electric type, um, we are pretty much boned. So they don't necessarily know we're scarfed here, so they might go for a Dragon Dance here. Um, so we go for a flower trick. Obviously, it's going to turn in into a grass type. It's your grass type. Boom. Plop. Tyranitar gets a critical hit to the face. They go for an Ice Beam, which is going to finish off Meowth So that's really cool seeing Ice Beam there. But um, now that they've terrored, it's not the end of the world because we do have an, an, another way of de de defeating this thing. We've got Donphan, of course, who can take at least one hit. But they haven't got a speed boost, so we can just go into Heracross now. Heracross should outspeed here, so we are all in the clear here. So we'll bring Heracross in like so, and um, as before, we'll just go straight for a uh, Pin Missile, I think. Pin Missile or Close Combat. I don't want my defenses dropped, so I'm going to go for a Pin Missile. If we miss, then so be it, but um, they do withdraw the Tyranitar, which is fine. They've lost their weakness policy, which is good. And they're going to go back into the Okie Dogi, which is also fine. We're going to get another Pin Missile off, which is great. We're going to have to sit through this animation again. There's two. And there's three. Boom. And there's four. Boom. And we only hit four times, which is fine. Um, critical hit, not a big deal. It didn't do much damage regardless. So now what, what we can do is um, we could go into Moltres again. They might predict the Moltres though. That's the problem. Um, so Donphan might be a more optimal play. So I think I'm going to go Donphan now. Because even if they go for a knockoff here, it's going to knock off our Rocky Helmet. But that still makes them make contact with it. And the Titar looks like it's a mixed, it's a mixed attacker or fully special, one of the two. Um, so I think their only physical attack is going to be um, Azumarill and the Torterra, both of which Donphan doesn't want to take on anyway. Um, so we will go into Donphan now, go into good old Michelin, like so. And they do withdraw. They make a double, predicting the Moltres to come in probably. And we're going to see another Tyranitar switch. So Tyranitar coming in once again, but this time we made the different play. So they probably weren't expecting the Donphan to come in. They were probably expecting the uh, Moltres. So that's great. So now we can, we've can we got a couple of options. We can get Stealth Rocks up, which would be really useful for the Chandelure. Um, I think Stealth Rocks are going to be great here. And they do go for an Ice Beam, which probably will two-shot us, to be fair. It does two-shot us. No Freeze, which is nice. We get the Stealth Rocks up. Again, I'm not really worried about this Titar, to be honest with you. I'm really not worried about the Titar too much. Um, basically, all I need to do here is, because they're going to go for an Ice Beam, we should go. We could go alone on Nine Tails, get the Aurora Veil up straight away. Which would be really nice. Uh, but then they just go for a fire or rock move. Maybe, I don't know whether T-Tar gets power gem. And probably, it probably does. Probably does. So we have to be careful what we do here. But I, I think I'm going to make the Ninetales switch. I don't think they'll expect us to switch Ninetales into the Tyranitar. So I don't think they will go for a move like power gem or fire blast right now. I think they'll go straight for the cut throw with the ice beam. So let's see what they do first. We get the snow warning up, boosting our physical defense. They go for another ice beam, which is going to bounce right off Ninetales, of course. And obviously, it's a nice type, so it can't be frozen. I do worry about freeze a little bit because I, I tend to get freeze hacks. <laughs> Last time I battled Cody, we got freeze hacks, so I'm a bit worried about it. So let's go for an Aurora Veil right now. And um, just to get the screens up, I think it's going to be really useful because they don't have a defogger or it has a clearer in general. They do have power gem, which is good to know. I didn't. I, I was like, Tyranitar, does it get power gem or not? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, that answers the question of that. So now. What we can do is, um, we can just go straight for a Moonblast. I don't see any reason not to go for a Moonblast here. Um, Moonblast comes through. Should do a lot. It doesn't take it out quite. I didn't. I thought it'd do less than that, to be fair, so that's fine. And uh, Ninetales goes down, which is absolutely amazing. So, we're now in a very good position because um, we can now go into our Kingdra, which is really cool. So, let's go Kingdra now. Go into good old Queendra. We do outspeed everything on our team for the moment. However, we need to be careful with the setup because obviously they have a Azumarill. And I'm pretty confident they'll sa save Tyranitar to sack later and go into the Azumarill now. Because Azumarill does pretty much wall us. Um, which is worrying. Which is very worrying. Um, I think the best thing to do here is to double into Heracross. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to double into Heracross expecting the Azumarill to come in. And once we've got rid of the Azumarill, Kingdra can go ham. Um, they go for a Thunderbolt. Okay, so they went for a Thunderbolt. 
Key targets, Thunderbolt. That's awesome. No damage, of course. Maybe it paralyzes us. No, it doesn't. That's fine. So now um, we can just go for let's just go for a pin missile and finish this thing off. Yeah, it looks like they're Steve keeping it in. They're just sacking off the T tower at this point, which is fine. Um, I didn't want to risk the Azumarill coming in and getting a free Belly Drum against my Kingdra, basically. Um, because if it got a Belly Drum off, it'd pretty much be over because we're, we are low on team members at the moment. But we do get a Moxie boost, which is going to be really useful. And we do outspeed majority of their team right now, which is fantastic. Okay, Okie Dokie comes in, which is fine. Okie Dokie's fine. Stones do dig into it. We've got a Moxie boost. Now, I want to keep Heracross around as much as I can. Now that the t tar has gone as well, uh, Moltres is looking pretty good right now. So let's go Moltres. I don't see any reason not to go Moltres. I don't think they'll have Stone Edge. I don't even know if Okie Dokie gets Stone Edge. So we'll go Moltres. Um, they do go for another knockoff. We might get the burn here. They get a crit, which is unfortunate. But we get the burn. So the crit was a good trade-off for the burn, I think. So that's great. Okie Dokie being um, burned is absolutely amazing for us. Absolutely amazing for us. Um, as now we can just simply go for it. We could go for a Flamethrower or a will o -Wisp. I'm leaning towards the flamethrower, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm hoping we see an Azumarill switch here. That'd be really nice. So we go for a flamethrower. That's going to go ahead and do a little bit of damage to the Okie Dogie. They go for another knockoff, maybe expecting a double switch. That's fine. Um, and then they're going to get burned a little bit. So I think it's in my best interest right now to go for a roost. So I'm going to go for the roost now. They do withdraw the Okie Dogie. Are they going to go Azumarill or Slow King? That's the real question. Or Chandelure. Chandelure makes sense as well. So Chandelure comes in nice and shiny. Look at that beauty. And um, we get some Stealth Rock chip, which tells me they're not heavy duty boots. They are more than likely going to be Choice Scarfed. And we're more than likely going to see a trick here, which if, if they go for a trick, it's fine. We just need to make sure we play our cards right. So I'm looking at you, Don Fan, and I'm looking at how invaluable you are. So I'm going to sack off Don Fan. And I know it's like a bit, a bit, a bit. Young, not young. It's a bit early to be sacking things off, but um, I'm going to go for it anyway. So Mitchellane comes in. They do go for a Shadow Ball, which is going to take care of us. That's fine. Oh, it's not. The uh, Aurora Veil saved us, but then it just wore off then. That's unfortunate. So, um, right. Okay, so what we can do here is we can go for an Ice Shard, no problem. And just get a bit of chip. A nice bit of chip. It was a critical hit as well, so we got a nice crit chip. And then they go for a Shadow Ball again to take us out. Um, so we don't know whether this thing's Scarfed or not. It probably is, though. So if I have reason to believe this thing... All right, all right. Uh, Azumarill kind of cleans up my team right now. Like, looking at it, really. Um, unless we can tear a Water with the Kingdra. Uh, that's an option. We could tear a Fairy U. We could tear a Rock with you. Um, I don't think you've got the... Def I don't think you've got the capabilities to take the Chandelure out. I mean, it's our only chance, so we're going to go into Heracross right now. It's our only real chance if we want to keep Kindra around to try and reverse sweep this team. So, um, we're going to have to Terra. Terra what? That's the real question. Do, do we Terra this thing? Do we Terra Rock? Um, we don't need it for the power, because Rock Blast will KO anyway. It's just if this thing's Scarfed, Rock Blast won't help us. Uh, Terra what? Rock won't help us. So, I'm going to just go for a Rock Blast here. And um, they do go for a Shandle Ball. There is a chance we live this, I think. Nah. Nah, not really. Heracross goes down. So now we're going to have to rely on good old Kingdra. So um, that is unfortunate. So let's go Kingdra now. Let's go Kingdra now. We do not need... Uh, does it two-shot us? I think it two-shot us. Let's go for a Hydra Pump. Um, they do go for a Shadow Ball, proving they are Choice Scarfed and they outspeed us. That does a lot of damage still. And it gets a spin F drop as well, which is unfortunate. And we miss the Hydro Pump. We don't miss the Hydro Pump, which is nice. Kingdra's going to get a nice KO against the Chandelure there. However, this does invite in the uh, Azumarill. And the Azumarill does not need to Belly Drum to KO our team right now. Um, which is unfortunate. But the Torterra is the one that's going to come in, actually. Torterra is the one that's going to come in, actually, which is interesting. So it gets a nice stone damage, which is awesome. And uh, the only way I win this is with Terra. Water Hydro Pump. So I'm going to go for the Terra Water Hydro Pump real quick. There we go. We're going to Terrestrialize into a Water Type like so. Gathering our Terra Energy. And we're going to destroy this Torterra life. Hopefully with a Hydro Pump if we can hit it. So it's all relying on us hitting the Hydro Pump at this point. That's, that's all it is. So Kingdra, come on through. Do your thing. We go for the Pump. And we missed. They go for a Smackdown. Interesting. So, SmackDown expecting the 
Moltres to come in. Very interesting. So what set is this Torterra? Because it is not Shell Smash. Let's go for another Hydro Pump at Terra Water. We do hit this time, which is nice. There we go. Hydro Pump comes through. And it's a two shot on the Torterra. They go for a high horsepower, though. That is going to definitely miss. Well, hey, the Torterra misses, which is nice. And now we get another opportunity to go for a Hydro Pump. So let's go for another Hydro Pump real quick. Um, we do miss, unfortunately. Can't hit them all, I guess. And they go for a high horsepower. This time they do connect. And it's going to be end of the game for Kingdra. So um, that is unfortunate that they managed to pull that off. But hey ho. Kingdra, come on back. You deserve a rest. So it all comes down to this. Can Moltres take on the rest of their team? Now that is the real question. I, without Terra, we can't. Let's go for a flamethrower on this Torterra. See if it KOs. I don't think it will. But it might. It does. It does, it does go ahead and KO. Which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But the Azumarill does come in for free here. So... That is the unfortunate thing about this matchup. I mean, we are at full HP pretty much, so we may have a chance if we burn the Azumarill, but um, they go into Velvet now, which is going to be the Azumarill, right? Yeah, nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. And um, they do get some Stealth Rock shit, which is great. We should outspeed here, so I'm going to go for a Will-O-Wisp anyway. And they go for an Aqua Jet, which is going to do minimal damage to us. And we get the Flame Body, which is pretty good for us. So Flame Body's great. Flame Body's great. We go for a Will-O-Wisp. Obviously, it fails. Um, nothing nothing to do about that as uh, they're gonna get some burnt damage which is great so we we, we, we don't want to go for a roosh yet we go for a flamethrower and we just try and get damage off on the zoom roll they probably switch a moves they go for the aqua jet which i'm guessing means they're banded and we go for a flamethrower which is going to take out velvet uh not not take out it's going to do some damage to velvet so we're whittling it away little by little um let's go for a roost now because I, I think moltres could pull this back Looking at the matchup, I think Moltres could pull this back. So Roost comes through. There we go. They get burned a little bit. And then we just go for another Flamethrower at this point. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident we can still win this. Um, they might have to switch out the uh, Azumarill. They do switch out the Azumarill. Probably to sack off the Okie Dogie. Yeah, Okie Dogie comes in. That's going to be sacked off. Because what they want to do now with the Azumarill is they want to switch up moves. So I'm guessing they're banded. They want to switch up moves and go for a Liquidation instead. So Okie Dogie goes down. Moltres gets a KO, which is fantastic. And now we just have Slowking and Azumarill left. Um, Slowking's the one that's going to come in now, which is interesting. So that's great. So Slowking comes in. Gets some Stealth Rock Chip, which is always nice. And this thing probably has something for us. So let's go for a Flamethrower. Just to get a bit of Chip on this thing. And that does more damage than I thought it would. They go for a Sludge Wave. This is going to sting a little bit. Not too much, though. No poison as well, which is great. So we go for another flamethrower. Flamethrower comes through from the turkey. Boom. They go for another sludge wave. Plop. We don't get poisoned. No poison. That's great. So let's go for another roost. Um, just to get some uh, health back. Because Moltres could still pull this back. Moltres could still pull this back. So sludge wave comes through. Oh, damn. That's, that's doing too much damage. Let's go for another roost. We just need to be at enough HP so we can live an Aqua Jet from the Azumarill. That's all we need. So Sludge Wave comes through again. Right, that's enough HP. So let's go for a Flamethrower and finish off this Slow King. That is enough HP for me. They withdraw the Slow King this time. They're going to get that Regenerator. So they guaranteed a win at this point. And they go into the Azumarill, which is fine. It's going to take some more Stealth Frog damage. So it takes it down to about half. Yep, there we go. And we go for a flamethrower on the switch. So um, that's, that's pretty awesome for us. A little bit of flamethrower damage. A little bit of burn damage. Can't go wrong, really. Um, we're going to have to... I want a roost. But the timer, the timer, the timer. Let's go for a roost. We'll go for one roost. Aqua Jet comes through. It doesn't do nearly enough damage. So we can go for another roost. Like so. But we've only got three left after this. So we. I don't, I don't want to use all of those. That's for sure. Um, so what we'll do in this next turn is we'll just attack with Flamethrower. Like so. We'll go for a Flamethrower. They go for an Aqua Jet again. Does no damage. Moltres is fighting for its life out here. Absolutely fighting for its life. So Burn comes through. That's going to go down to a Burn the next turn, which is fantastic. Which means all we have to do here is go for a Roost. Um, they go for an Aqua Jet, of course. That's going to do minimal damage. Even if it was a crit, it wouldn't take us out. And we go for a Roost now, which is fantastic. That was a well-timed Roost, I'd say. And the burn's going to take out the Azumarill. So this is actually coming really close, thanks to Moltres. Moltres is coming pretty close right now. Moltres is putting it pretty close. So the battle ends in 60 seconds. Can we do this? Slow King comes in. Let's see what we can do here. 
So it's low on HP already. He gets some Stealth Frog damage, taking it down to half. We go for a Flamethrower. Flamethrower should two-shot from here. It does, which means we get the win. We get the win. So Sludge Wave comes through, and unless they get a crit, which they don't, we go for another Flamethrower. That is going to be the game. Moltres pulled it back. What an absolute legend. I mean, it is a legendary, but what an absolute legend. GG Cody, that was a really fun, close game. Came right down to the wire, right down to the timer as well. Awesome stuff. And that's your lot, I'm afraid. The video is now over. Feel free to try the team out using the code on screen now. If you do, let me know how it goes in the comment section down below. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe as well. It really helps me out and I appreciate it. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.